Okay, this is a little bit of details about uh, your project proposal and your first project. So, you have this data. I, I provided you with this data. It's on uh, Blackboard. And um, so we have, for example, this one. And here we don't know where the hotels are located, but uh, you do have uh, data here. Here's a um, various, here's the raw data here, and you can see that it's monthly data. And then we also have the explanation of the data uh, here under help. Okay, then uh, for known locations, for example, this is Philadelphia, you can see that um, you have a uh, the same kind of data, and you have the raw data here. This is again monthly, but there's also daily data here. Okay, so you can um, use data like this. Now, some of this is, uh, some of these columns are partially empty. So I don't think, and these are what we would call calculated fields. So percentage change is uh, calculated from, I guess, from two years, and then you look at the percentage change or something like that. So some of these uh, we you may not need or may not want to use. So in that case, you can delete them. So I'll delete this one, hit the Control key, and delete this one. And select this one, and select this one, and so on. And then um, I'll delete them. Okay, and uh, to use this data, uh, first of all, you'd want to save it as a CSV file or uh, as a single Excel, uh, an Excel workbook with just a single sheet. It doesn't. I think there are ways to avoid that, but that will make it easiest. So first of all, uh, you could, you basically want to have just the, when you have your data set, you want to have just the variable names, the column names, and the data. You don't want a lot of other, a lot of other rows or uh, things like that. So you might want to first get rid of this. And this one. And there's still one hiding up here, at least one. And um, then, and here's a column that's not necessary. And then at the bottom of the data set as well, there's this stuff. And then next you want to think about, well, what data um, am I actually going to use? And what kind of algorithms am I going to use? And does the algorithm accept inputs that are not numeric, for example? So this column is not numeric, right? And um, actually dates are not going to be considered numeric either uh, by Weka in general. Now, if you use... Uh, if you import it as an Excel sheet, I'm not quite sure what will happen. Uh, it might be more intelligent and recognize it as a date. But anyway, uh, it's not even really uh, clear that you want to include date when you do predictions. Okay? So, uh, but um, we can leave them in there for now and then open this up in Weka. Now, the first thing <coughs> we want to do is, first of all, save this maybe as an Excel sheet. It's just with a single a uh, single uh, sheet. Well, actually, let's see. I think I'll get rid of all the other... Well, maybe I don't need to. I'll just save it as an Excel sheet. Okay, copy. And uh, I want to save it here. And then um, 
I also want to save it as a CSV sh uh, spreadsheet. CSV sheet here. Okay, then I want to try and <coughs> work with this in Weka. So I recommend that you use uh, this version of Weka, which is a, a developer version as opposed to a stable version. Okay, and the reason is because I believe that the stable version, I may be wrong, but I believe that the stable version doesn't have this package manager, which will be useful. So you open up this package manager and um, you can find, um, I guess you click on all here, and you can find, for example, Excel, Weka, I think it's called Weka Excel, and you can install that, and that will make it possible to open up a an Excel sheet directly into Weka, otherwise you can't do it. You can open up CSV, but not Excel. So I actually have it already installed, but uh, so you could do that with the package manager. And then we want to go to here, and we want to try opening things up. Now let's see if I open, let's see if what happens when I use uh, the Excel. Oh, I have to go to, let's see, Excel spreadsheets like this. And what was it called? I think it was actually a, a this type of Excel sheet. There it is. Let's see if we can open it. Okay, so it opens it, but it doesn't have the column names. So this is strange. Did I open the wrong one? So I think um, this is a problem because uh, there's more than one sheet in the uh, workbook. So I should, like I said, maybe I should... Um, Save this as it delete the other sheets in there. So I'll go back and open it. Where is it? Documents. And I'll delete the other sheets. So I just want, I think it's a raw data sheet. No, daily data sheet. So the other ones I'll delete. And Let's try and save this one and try and reopen it. No, what's wrong? Okay, I'm not quite sure what's going on, but one thing I noticed is that this is the column name for this column. First of all, I don't think it likes spaces in the name, so I'm just going to change this to census. And then these, oops, that's there now. Hmm. It's in both of them. Census. Okay, that's weird. Uh, what is that? Hmm. Well, that's called census. But it's and then this one is empty. Anyway, I'm just going to give us an arbitrary name A. And this one B. So at least you need um, something weird here. B. And this should be A. I don't. Okay, now that looks okay. At least you need to have that. You can't have columns without uh, names. Uh, okay. So the problem is that there is still one more sheet there here. So let me delete that. Try this again. 
just save it and try it again. Still doesn't work. What's wrong? Okay, there was still one more t uh, sheet in there, but now I got rid of that. I'll save it again. Try this again. Sometimes you also have to ex you have to actually close Weka completely down and reopen it, but I don't think that was the issue here. Okay, and finally. I could get it open. However, there's still some more problems here because if I scroll through it, after A and B I have all these other columns which don't actually exist. So somehow there must be some remaining data out here that it's making it think that there's still more sheets there. So what I have to do is, so I guess this is the problem when you have uh, free software have to do things like this. Okay, and then, okay. Now, let's try it again. I'll save it again. And go to Weka. Okay, and now, those other Oh, there's still another column there. Hmm. I know what's going on. So I'm 16. Try it again. Just delete all these. Save it again. Go to Weka. Open. Okay, sort of. Okay, now we could try, just for, uh, as an example, we, well, okay. So we could try, it like, it's just a linear regression. So I might try to predict demand from, or no, I'm sorry, I might try and predict occupancy from supply. Okay, I don't know if that makes any sense. And what you have to do is go back and read what these variables are, and that's on the original spreadsheet in the help section. Okay, so, but just as an example, I'm going to try and predict occupancy from supply, and I'm going to use regression. So first of all, you have to get rid of all these other variables. So you select all of them, and then you can deselect just occupancy and supply, and then to, uh, to, to remove all the others, Re remove all the checked ones. Okay, so I only have those two. Now I could save this as another file. In fact, I'll save it as an R file, because usually Weka works a little bit better with R, <coughs> R files. So I'll call it just a supply and occupancy, just to denote it as that, and save it as an R file. Okay, that way I don't lose the original file. And then I'll go to, uh, so first of all I want to check what kinds of uh, data are these. So this is numeric and supply is also numeric. So that's okay for regression. Some uh, algorithms need numeric, some algorithms need non-numeric and so on. So for regression <coughs> we need uh, <coughs> uh, numeric. So for both the input and the output. Now we go to classify, and uh, we have to decide which one we're trying to predict. And that's down here. So I want to predict occupancy. And uh, we'll just use, the, in this case, the training set. And uh, so you should, when you describe what you did, you should say what you used here and uh, you, you should describe what you're doing here. In other words, this is the variable that you're trying to predict, but you should also describe what you did in Weka uh, to, to get that. Anyway, so now I'll go to here, 
and I'll go to, it's under functions, uh, regression is under functions, and I'll do linear regression, no, I'll do um, simple. Uh, yeah, I guess we're the only choices we have are simple and linear. So uh, I'll do in linear and simple in this case are the same because we have simple means you only have one input variable, and we only have one input variable. So I guess I'll try that and um, just do it, and it's done. And um, so here we have the results. So. Uh, correlation coefficient is not too strong, it's quite weak, uh, which means that uh, uh, <coughs> the uh, prediction is not so so powerful. And it also says that we had two attributes, uh, that would be uh, the um, occupants and, the, and supply, and um, uh, the regret, uh, the equation is zero times supply minus 5.75. So that means basically the zero means that uh, this is the equation. So what we're saying is that zero times supply minus 5.75 gives you a prediction for what the occupancy is. So, but it's zero. That means that um, supply doesn't have any effect on the prediction. So that uh, suggests that this regression wasn't very useful. But anyway, uh, but anyway, we did it, and you can report it, and uh, as part of your proposal, or I'm sorry, as part of your final project, if you like. Um, so, and then the total number of instances we used was 515. That means uh, the total number of records that we had was 515, which is here, basically. The first two columns, I guess, didn't count. Now, another thing is that this time it didn't seem to matter. In fact, no, this time it was there were no blank rows, or there were no blank data. Suppose this had been not there, then really what you would need to do is delete this whole row, because it wouldn't process it. Uh, Weka wouldn't work with it, probably, uh, if there's a blank row. So uh, I have to do that kind of thing as well. Now we could go back here and open up the original file so that we had all the variables back, and we could try other variables and other combinations. Uh, we can also use um, other classifiers. For example, we might try using a, a neural network, which is here. Now with just uh, one input variable, I, I don't think it's very interesting, but just to show you how it's done, you would do that and uh, occupancy is still the thing that we're trying to predict. So we just do start. Okay, it finishes very quickly. And uh, again, it's not very strong, but it might be better than, um, than it was uh, for the other, uh, for the other. Now, uh, then, then the regression. Now, if you wanted to use, for example, um, some of the other algorithms that require uh, uh, non-numeric output variable. So occupancy currently is our output variable, and that's numeric. But uh, maybe we could make some kind of transformation on occupancy uh, so that it's uh, uh, not numeric. So what I mean by that is I might define a new variable called occupancy categorical, and I might make that do something like this. So I might put in a formula, <coughs> something like this. So if G2, that's the um, occupancy column, uh, is greater than 0.95, then call it A. If G, and then do another, comma, if G2 is greater than 0.90, then call it B, comma, if G2 is greater than uh, 0.85, then call it, oops, great, yeah, greater than 0.85, then uh, call it C, comma, if uh, G2 is greater than 0.80, call it D, 
see, you need the, you need the quotation marks there. I'll do one more, or, yeah. If G2 is uh, greater than 0.75, then I'll call it E, and otherwise I'll call it F. put in the right parentheses, so the green parentheses, the purple parentheses, the red parentheses, that one, and that one. Okay, so that looks okay. No. What did I do wrong? Um, it kind of finds the error for me, and I have this comma there, which should not be there. How about the rest of it. Okay, maybe it's okay. Let's try it again. Okay. So, but that's wrong. Why is it giving me a uh, 24? I shouldn't have used per, uh, point in my formula. So I have to get rid of these points here. Point. Okay, I fixed that, but I still have a problem here because uh, it says name here. That's because I guess here I've got the quotation marks. No, let's see. Okay. That doesn't look right, though. Okay, it's still not right because it shouldn't be 9. It should be 90. And this should be 85, 80, and this should be 75. Okay, let's try it again. Okay, it's F. Okay, now hopefully this is working. So I'll copy this column down to here, all the way down to the end. Now there might be ways to do this. I think there are ways to do this within Weka instead of doing it in Excel. But... Uh, I'm doing it here. Okay. So now I'll save this. Make sure I don't have anything else in here. Okay. And I'll try and open this up now in Weka. Let's see if sometimes Weka won't let you open it if um, it's open in Excel, but let's see what happens. So I'll go here. And so that's the old one. I want to go here. And I think this is it. Okay. And okay. So now, occupancy categorical. Now what it's doing, the reason it's giving me all this, is um, it assumes that the last variable is the class variable. That is, that's the variable that you want to uh, predict. And um, so what it does in this kind of, oh, here it is, sorry. Here's the class variable. It, doesn't assu it does assume it, but you can also change it. But it assumes that it's the last one, so that's currently the last one. So what it's saying, let's see, for example, for weeks, or let's say for month. So these are the different months, and what we have is, um, uh, let's see, this is, Class. So one of these colors represents the. Uh, each color represents a different class. So we. C but uh, the question is, which one? Let's see. Maybe we have to go back here. I can see that the pink is this class, which I guess is the F class. Um, so is that true? Yeah. Here, five is the F class. Uh, so if we go back to uh, month. And uh, so the pink means that there's um, a lot um, in the first month, I guess that would be January, there's a lot of pink. In the second month, there's a lot of pink. But like over here, there's less pink. In fact, there's less all, all, uh, altogether. Uh, but the months are apparently are being treated numeric. So it's hard to know what they are. 
Um, but anyway, that's the idea. So you can take a look at this. Now, since we have a categorical variable which we can try and predict, we can use uh, some. We could use. Let's try. Let's try this actually. Uh, but I don't want to use. I don't want to include all of these. In fact, I definitely don't want to. You definitely would not want to include um, occupancy to predict this. That would be um, silly. Okay. So anyway, uh, we will try. Suppose I want to get rid of most of these. So I'll select all, and I'll keep this one, and I'll keep. Uh, supply and demand. Suppose I wanted to use supply and demand to predict this uh, categorical variable. So I'll remove all the others and I can either save this so that I can use this uh, again, in which case I might want to denote it as supply, demand, and uh, occupancy categorical. Save it. I want to be able to use it again. And then um, I can go to classify. And now, let's see what happens if I try this. Okay, now we get the confusion matrix. And we can see uh, down the diagonal are the correct ones. And then these are wrong, and these are wrong. And we can check, and we can see uh, that we had a 96% um, accuracy, accuracy rate. Now. Okay, so that's great. And we can also try some other um, algorithms as well. Uh, we can try tree algorithms and so on. Now, here's one thing that we have to pay attention to. And that is that it doesn't really make sense or um, to predict occupancy rate with the same... Uh, months data or same days data. So this is all, let's see what day, these are, this is, a, remember this is daily data. So it doesn't really make sense to use this data, uh, like, I'm sorry, to use like Friday's data. I mean, I'm using all this data, like this number and this number and this number. Actually, I didn't, I only used what, supply and something else. But um, in any case, even if I'm just using supply, it doesn't make sense to use today's supply to predict today's occupancy rate. Okay, because uh, that doesn't really help me. If I if I want to make a prediction about tomorrow and I and I need to know tomorrow's supply to do that, that's not very useful. So what you want to do is the variables that you're trying to predict, the output variables, you want to lag them in relationship to the other variables. So like, <coughs> I want to use um, this data pr to predict this day. Or I might want to use this data pr to predict this day, but I don't want to use this data to predict this day. So what I can do is I can just drag all of these variables down, or I can move this set up. So either way, suppose I move it up, so I need to get some more space, um, like that. So I can move it up one day or two days or three days or whatever. That's going to be the lag. So you might want to test just pre uh, using today's uh, supply to predict tomorrow's occupancy rate, or you want to might want to predict use today's supply to to predict the occupancy rate one week from today or something like that. But if I just want to use today's to predict. Uh, tomorrow's occupancy, what I have to do is move this occupancy up to this row. And then, of course, I want to move this occupancy to this row. So I just want to move this whole uh, column. I'll just do that with Control-Shift. I'll just do this, Control-Shift, arrow down. And then I'll just move that up to here. Okay, and also I'm going to take the other column as well that I created here and do the same thing and move that up as well. 
Okay. And now I am have a one-day lag. Now, as I said, you can have more than a one-day lag. Now I need to delete this row, though, because everything is blank except for those two. Okay, and now I'll call this uh, save as Philadelphia one day lag. Okay. Okay. Now, you can do this in Excel, there are ways, to, I'm sorry, in uh, Weka, but I'm just doing it like this now. Okay, now, uh, let's try opening this one, and now this will make more sense in terms of, or be more useful. So I'll open it up, and it's this one, let's see if it opens. Sometimes these things don't open, but this time it worked. Okay, now, Let's try the same, what was it, supply and occupancy, is that what we had last time? So I'll get rid of the others. What did I have last time? Let's check that. What was that? I had, as inputs, I had supply and demand, so let's try that again. So supply and demand, okay, so um, I can just do invert. So these are the only ones that are selected, or I'm sorry, the zero ones is not selected, so I'll remove the others. Okay, and occupancy is the bottom one. So that's the one that uh, Weka will default try to predict, but you can select it here if you wanted to. I actually want to save this as one day lag, and then call it supply. You can figure out some other way to name this. Supply, what did I have? Demand, I don't know. and uh, occupancy. Okay, so let's save that. And then I'll try it again. So same multi-layer perceptron. Now this is a more realistic um, test. So now it's not, it's terrible. Well, it's pretty bad. So you see that there's virtually nothing in the Diagonal. So there's this much. So what is it saying? It's saying, uh, well, what it's doing, this is not too exciting. What it's doing is um, it's classifying everything as category E. Category F means less than whatever it was, 80% uh, or something like that. So that's what this classifier is doing. That's so it still might get some fairly decent uh, statistics, 74 percent, so that's uh, that sounds pretty good, but all it's doing is just classifying everything as category E, so that's not really uh, very interesting as a data mining result, okay? So, um, but anyway, that you could also report that. Um, so now we've found that the this uh, multi-layer perceptron, this neural network, is not working that well because it's classifying everything as category E. Now, it turns out that there's a lot in category E, and so it turns out that it's, uh, it's, get, it's still getting pretty good accuracy, 75% accuracy. But uh, you can see that it's not really an exciting result. Um, so how can you try and fix this? One thing you could try and do is introduce more categories. So instead of just A, B, C, D, E, F, you might in introduce more categories. Maybe that will help. Uh, or you could try and think of other ways that you might be able to improve this. And you could report on these. Um, you could also uh, try for uh, a, a longer lag. So instead of predicting the day ahead, you might try and predict two days ahead or three days ahead or one week ahead or maybe even one month ahead, in which case you'd have to lag the variables in a different way. Or instead of trying, uh, in trying to, instead of trying to predict um, daily occupancy rates, you might try and summarize this data into weekly or monthly. Actually, it's already given to you in the original spreadsheet. It was given to you, but um, you could either use so you could use the different forms of the data. So you could just try and predict uh, weekly or monthly um, figures as well. Okay, 
So this is the kind of thing you're going to play with, um, and uh, you're going to use. Um, you can use other. You could use a tree algorithm as well. For example, you could use uh, J48, which uh, we're going to talk about a bit in our next class, actually. Okay, so I hope this helps you to get started uh, and uh, helps you. Now, you, you're supposed to also have your... Uh, oh, one other point. One other thing is that um, you are supposed to do a literature review. Actually, it was due last week. And I just want to warn you, for those of you who didn't realize it, uh, that you can use Google Scholar, but you need to use it uh, on campus. If you use it from home, you'll you'll see all the names of the articles. You can even read usually the um, abstracts of the articles of the journal articles, but you can't read you can't you can't access very many of them. But if you're on campus, all the journals that APU is subscribed to, you can actually read the journals. So your goal, or what you're supposed to do, is find two journal articles that are predicting hotel accu uh, occupancy rates. And you're supposed to see what variables are they using uh, as their inputs to predict the occupancy rate. So um, they're probably not using these variables. Uh, they're using, um, but they're, they're, so I'd like you to check and see what they are using. One last thing is you could use um, a lag of today's occupancy rate. So you could create a new variable called like yesterday's occupancy um, and what you would do is you would just take <coughs> today's and lag it so you would predict um, you would use uh, this one to predict this and this one to predict this or you could do two days lag or whatever so you're allowed to do that if it's uh, yesterday's occupancy rate to predict today's occupancy rate and so on. You can do that kind of thing as well. So you can. Uh, so that's probably actually the kinds of variables that they are using um, in these other journal articles. Okay. And then one more thing is uh, you're supposed to think about other variables that are not available in this data set that you can use and where you can get that data. Okay. Now remember that um, here. You have uh, data for different cities in the United States, Philadelphia, Denver, Atlanta, Tampa, San Diego, and Dallas. So you can maybe look for data specific to these cities as well, or national data from the United States, or whatever you think might be useful. Okay. <coughs>